What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Christian Corey. You see the title and the thumbnail in today's video. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, guys. So, I wanted to compare two very, very good teams in the senior circuit, the National League. That, of course, being the New York Mets and the San Francisco Giants. Now, both teams are at the top of their respected divisions. Mets are at the top of the East, and the Giants are at the top of the West right now. The Mets, currently, as it stands here on a Friday, June the 4th, they are 27 and 22, three and a half games back of the second place Braves. And the Giants are also at the top of their division. They are a game up on the Padres. These two teams have a lot of similarities, not just because, you know, the Giants were the first team to play in New York and then they moved from New York to San Francisco and then were kind of replaced by the Mets. As you can kind of tell, the Mets and the Giants share similar colors, similar colors color schemes, similar fonts. They're basically the same team if you really take a deep dive into their history being the Mets and the Giants. Also, if you think about it, the Giants have a Mets logo flag flying in San Francisco, replicating one of the times they won a World Series as a New York Giant. Here in 2021, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of similarities between these two clubs. Not only the fact that they are atop of their respective divisions here in the early going, but the last time these two teams made the playoffs was 2016. And they met each other in the 2016 wild card game and the Giants won that wild card game in New York to advance deeper into the postseason. So there are some similarities there, but right now here in 2021, I want to know who has a better shot to go deep into this year's postseason. So let's go over some of the stats for the Mets and for the Giants when it comes to starting pitching, run scored, and I'll kind of assess what I think of both teams at the end. So let's start off with the New York Mets. So I want to go over the Mets rotation because the Mets rotation is obviously immaculate, especially the top three guys in their rotation being DeGrom, Stroman, and Walker. So first guy is Jacob DeGrom. I mean, the number one pitcher in all of baseball, undoubtedly, I would say right now, he is four and two. He has an ERA under one at 0 0.71, 82 strikeouts in eight games started this season. So, I mean, he is midway into this thing and he has an ERA under one, well under one. And, you know, he's going for the old Bob Gibson ERA title record he set back in 1968 when Bob Gibson finished the season with a 1.12 ERA to finish out the 68 season. So, the Mets number one is being a number one and has been a number one through the first part of the season here. And then you got Marcus Stroman, not too shabby. The record is about 500 at 4-4. Four and four. ERA at 2.66. He has 52 strikeouts in 11 games started this season. Now again, DeGrom, I think he had some injury bugs a little bit here and there. Pretty much precautionary measures, I would say, by the Mets when it comes to not allowing DeGrom to make some starts due to fatigue and injuries. Um, but that's kind of the reason why DeGrom has 8 starts and Stroman has 11. And all the other guys in the rotation, except for one being Lucchese, has more than eight to nine starts. Next, you got Taiwan Walker, who has been really, really great as of late. He is four and two, an ERA at 2.17, 51 strikeouts in 10 games this season. Next guy, David Peterson. He's one and four, the worst record overall. His ERA is almost at six. It's not sexy like the top three. 49 strikeouts, just as many strikeouts as Walker, surprisingly, in 10 games, just like Walker this season for David Peterson. And then Joey Lucchese, he is one in three, not the best for the Mets. He has an ERA above six, almost at seven, 6.56, 27 strikeouts in eight games started. So kind of the guy who's getting starts here and there, I would say. So obviously Lucchese is not the top gun in their rotation, but again, he's kind of been a fill-in, but they've had a lot of injuries. I mean, Carrasco's still out, still waiting on Thor to come back. 
So that's why you see the top three in the Mets rotation having immaculate numbers. And then you see the other two being Peterson and Lucchese not living up to the sexiest numbers uh, here in 2021. But again, overall, the Mets have been doing really well in the starting rotation category. As a rotation combined, they have a record of 14 and 15. Now, again, you know, basically a game under 500 when it comes to wins and losses. But if you just add in the top three guys in their rotation being DeGrom, Stroman, and Walker, they have a record combined the top three guys of 12 and 8. So that is really, really well. If you just eliminate David Peterson and Joey Lucchese's numbers, they are doing very well in the starting rotation category. And that's why they're winning so many games because the top three is reminiscent of back in 2014 when the Tigers had Verlander, Serger, Porcello, I do think was on that squad still, David Price. So they had a lot of guys in the Tigers rotation back in 2014. And this is what the Mets rotation is looking like here in the early going of 2021. But on the other side of the ball for the Mets, they're doing not as well when it comes to the overall performance of their lineup. I have found that the Mets have only won 12 games in where they have scored five runs or more through their first 49 to 50 games this season. And if that doesn't put you back in your seat, I have also found out that the Mets are 28th out of 30 in runs scored per game in all of baseball. They're averaging 3.7 runs per game and they're only ahead of the Detroit Tigers and the Pittsburgh Pirates. So that means that the worst team in baseball right now, the Orioles, are averaging more runs per game overall than the New York Mets are, a first place club. So the Mets have been doing great when it comes to starting rotation and pitching wise, but offense has just not been there through the season. So they got to step it up when it comes to scoring runs. Their wins are coming in this, you know, one to nothing, two to three, two to nothing type of games. They're not blowing out the opposition when it comes to the offense, but you know, their arms are blowing them out of the water, but not the bat. So that's kind of concerning for the Mets here in 2021. All right. So now I want to go over the San Francisco Giants and I'll go over kind of the same things I did with the Mets when it comes to looking at the Giants rotation and their offensive production overall as a squad here in 2021. So to start it off with the Giants rotation, we got Johnny Cueto. Johnny Cueto is 4-1, and one, has a 3.45 ERA, 36 strikeouts in eight games started. 36 strikeouts. That's not a lot of strikeouts, but if you know who Johnny Cueto is as a pitcher and how he has been having success in the major leagues throughout his career, he's not a big strikeout guy. I mean, he might try to fool you a little bit here with the Louis Tion tilt, but other than that, he's a ground ball type of pitcher, fly ball type of pitcher, you know, fooling hitters when it comes to location deception. He's not going to overpower you with 99, 98, 97 like Thor and DeGrom is, but he's going to get you when it comes to the ground balls and he induces a lot of ground ball outs and that's what makes him so successful and that's why he has a winning record, but still a low strikeout total. So that's what I wanted to go over with Johnny Cueto. The next guy in the Giants rotation is Kevin Gosman. Now Gosman is doing really, really well this season. He is actually better than Jacob deGrom. I'm not kidding. If you look at it, Jacob deGrom is four and two, has an ERA under one. The ERA is there. I get it. The ERA is there. I love the ERA, but Kevin Gosman is 6-0. and oh. He does not have a loss. And he has an ERA under 2 at 1.40. So the ERA is pretty darn good, but the record is even better. 83 strikeouts, and DeGrom has 82. So DeGrom and Gosman, I think, are the two best pitchers in the National League, if not all of Major League Baseball right now. So there's that for the Giants. So their number two guy is really their number one. Now, Anthony DiSclefani is the next guy guy in the rotation. He is 5 and 2 with an ERA at 3.51, 58 strikeouts in 12 games started. You know, ERA isn't terrible. I mean, you know, it's almost at 4, but I feel like, you know, if you're not Jacob DeGrom, the ERA doesn't matter. As long as you're winning games, which he is, he's 5 and 2, 
that's all that matters if you're the Giants and Anthony DiSclefani. Now, Alex Wood is the next guy, the last guy in the rotation right now. He's 5-3, and three, has an ERA of 3.48, 52 strikeouts in nine games started this season, which isn't terrible. Again, DiSclefani and Wood are doing pretty much the same thing. I mean... Di Sclafani is a little bit better, but probably because he started more games than Alex Wood has. So you got to factor that into the Giants pitching equation as well. The next thing I want to go over is the Giants run production. The Giants have only won nine games in which they have scored three runs or fewer. This season, the Giants are ninth in all of baseball in runs scored per game at 4.80. They are scoring over five runs per game on the road at 5.22. So they are better on the road than they are at home at Oracle Park. Now, to the average sports fan, that may be surprising. But if you know baseball and understand where the Giants play, it's not because Oracle Park is a very, very big ballpark. On the road, they're scoring more runs because I would say traditionally, for the most part, the National League has pretty small ballparks versus the American League. I know the Eastern Division, the American League is very small, but overall, I would say the National League has collectively smaller ballparks than the American League does. So that's kind of why the Giants are scoring more runs on the road than they are at home. But again, they're ninth in scoring in all of baseball. And the Mets are 28th. So the Giants offense is far, far better when it comes to run production than the New York Mets are. So there is something you got to consider too. But the Mets starting rotation is better than the Giants. And that's with some key injuries to Carrasco and Thor. My question is, which I got to answer, is who has a better shot of going deep into the postseason after looking at these numbers when it comes to starting rotation and offensive production. I would say, personally, the Mets. I think the Mets have a better shot at going deep into the playoffs. And the main reason why is because of that rotation. I think overall, the Giants are doing great in the run production. I mean, they're, they're doing fantastic. And the rotation is nothing to laugh at either. But I just think the Mets have more experience when it comes to their starting rotation. Their offense, although right now is 28th, I think they could pick it up. The Mets rotation will carry them into the postseason, deep into the postseason. The reason why is because, in my mind, pitching wins championships. I don't care about the bullpen and whatever. Yes, the bullpen matters. Trust me, I'm a Tigers fan. The bullpen has blown many games for us in the past. But guess what? The bullpen can't blow any games if the starting rotation can't get you any wins and get you into a winning position at least. So I think the Mets going into the postseason are better constructed because of the way the rotation is stacked up. The Giants are inexperienced in the rotation department. Yes, they have Posey. Yes, Posey is a big part of the rotation. It can help out the young pitchers once they get into the fall. But I think Right now, as it stands, the Mets, because of their rotation, have a better shot at making the postseason. Not only making the postseason, but I think right now the Mets have a better shot at winning a championship because of their rotation. And you can't count out that offense. Yes, the offense is doing terrible, but they will pick it up eventually. And New York Mets, the way the rotation is stacked up, they have a better shot at winning a championship than the Giants do here in 2021. Alrighty guys, that's all I got for today's video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts on who you think is better equipped to make a deep run here in 2021. Is it the Mets? Is it the Giants? Let me know in the comment section down below and I will catch you guys later.